All right. Three, two, one. We're live. Connor, what's up, man? Hey, how are we doing, Tao? Good. I like your beanie. You said what's on top there? I don't know. You got a little puff ball on top. I don't know. A little puff ball on top. Your Rams put me to shame. I was on the uh, New England hype train, minus five. Uh, you proved me wrong. Your Rams proved me wrong. Yeah, I just didn't see in that way, and it's obviously how it played out, but I didn't see how the Patriots were going to score any points. They don't have anybody good. I mean, Cam can't throw the ball. He got benched. It's Again, all these things, it sounds like I'm just saying this like I'm sounding smart because it ended up happening, but Cam can't throw the ball. They don't have any good receivers, and so the Rams are just going to load the box to stop the run, and that's exactly what happened. And so there, and there was Belichick never – And Belichick said Cam's their quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I think you kind of got to keep going with that. If I was the Pats, though, I'm going to try to evaluate Stidham and see if he can be good. They keep thinking he can be, and so if he can win a couple games down the stretch, maybe you think, all right, that's the guy. They also might be just trying to be bad to get a pick, a good pick. I don't know, but Rams defense is – excuse me. The Rams defense is so good, and I think that that is going to make them really scary for the rest of the season, and if their offense, especially now with the way Cam Akers ran the ball yesterday and how he's played the last few weeks – they can keep doing that. They are a not even exaggerating a legit Super Bowl contender. They are absolutely. They're a legit Super Bowl contender. But hey, we should tell people this is spitting fire. We didn't introduce this is <laughs> spitting fire. Welcome in, everyone. We're we're glad to have you here. If you saw a bunch of emojis as a podcast cover and you just click the button, press play. This is spitting fire. Uh, and let's do our sponsorship. R and R. Connor's taking a sip right now. Oh yeah. R and R brewing. Love their beer. Apparently we found out there's another R and R, but we are not repping that one. We're talking about the Bay area based Northern California R and R brewing. Love their beer. Love their gear. Uh, drinking it right now. So go out and get yours today. Where can people find it? You got to ask me. I'll find it for you. You can <laughs> only find it in the Connor's DMs. Me. Connor, you want to give out your public email? We'll put my public email. Yeah. It's just my first and last name. Go for it. Connor Iberg at gmail.com. Get him. Yep. <laughs> That's our Simply marketing right now. There you go. So listen, the Patriots, I, I was so biased. You know, I had to go against you. I, I wanted to see that. I think the league's more interesting. I'm a Steelers fan. The league's more interesting when the Patriots are in the running to make the playoffs. I mean, they're an easy team to hate, but I think it's also nice that we have a little bit of a break. We've had 20 straight years of them being good. They haven't won. They haven't won single digit games since 2002. So I just, you know, I think. It's interesting because the Rams have kind of now bookended the Patriots dynasty. You know, they accounted for their first and their last Super Bowl. I mean, again, we can assume their last Super Bowl. Rams really, I mean, there's a bunch of articles came out, but kind of that loss is what now killed the Patriots. They're not going to make the playoffs now, and they're just not a good team, right? I think the last time they missed the playoffs, they were still 11-5, and five, the Matt Castle year in 2008. So, I mean, that doesn't even count, right? And so, you know, this Patriots team's not very good. Belichick's done a great job coaching them, but you know, it, it hurts, but yeah, I mean, I I'm more impressed. It's funny. All the articles right now are talking about how, um, you know, bad the Patriots are and how they're done. No one's given the Rams credit for just going in there and steamrolling them. They stopped them four times on the goal or three times on the goal line yep. and then held them to a field goal the fourth time. I yep. mean, that that's a, an incredible defense. They had six sacks. Aaron Donald lived in the backfield. They pressured on 55% of Cam's back uh, dropbacks. I mean, that they are a complete team right now. And the only thing I've, I've said it time and time again, the only thing that concerns me is their linebackers and pass coverage. And Kenny Young had a pick six in this game. So, you know, I, it, it, they're a great team. They've scored a defensive touchdown in three straight games. So, you know, really rounding into form come uh, playoff time now. Yeah. And what do you think of Jared Goff? 16 and 25, 137 yards, TD interception. You could go both ways on this, right? You could say, hey, the game script was we got the early pick six. The Patriots were playing from behind. They couldn't run the ball. I mean, they got down to the end zone, but the game script wasn't good for the Patriots in what they wanted to do. And then the Rams got to basically do what the Patriots would do and run the football, let the young rookie move in Cam Akers. Yeah, I mean, I think the the thing that's concerning with the Rams right now, and it's, you know, the loss of Brandon Cooks is the reason. They don't, they're not able to manufacture deep shots anymore. I don't think Goff's thrown the ball past like 20 yards the past three weeks. He definitely doesn't have a long completion. So that's definitely concerning because teams are now going to start playing closer and closer to the line. Um, you know, I think part of that is McVeigh putting Goff in good situations to get the ball out of his hands quick and not have to, you know, make all these crazy plays. He showed some trust in him on that roll, though. That was yeah. tight when he made that roll to Cooper Cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's where you see that. And that's, that's Goff at his best, right? Rolling out, throwing it. He has good footwork that way. But sometimes when he just has straight dropbacks, it's not great. I mean, I think the pick and his one interception was a horrible throw and it deserved, he deserves credit for it.
but I don't think it should have been an interception. I think that that was just kind of a fluky play. That was a great play by the defensive back, but that still was a horrible blow and behind Robert Woods. Right. And so, uh, you know, you, you almost look at that and think if there's any other receiver in the league, the guy just drops the ball straight away, but Woods is so good. He actually was able to catch the ball and then just get it ripped from him. So, you know, golf didn't play great, but that's okay. Right. I think, you know, I like the Rams need to get back to establishing the run and Cam Akers having 171 yards is, is huge. And so if they can keep establishing the run like that, play action's going to be open. Goff's going to have time. They looked, the Rams, the Rams are a lot more deliberate and not as explosive as they used to be, um, you know, in 2018 when they made the Super Bowl. But they have just as efficient of an offense in my mind of they just moved the ball so well. And that was really demonstrated. They had like the 14 play, nine minute, 90 yard touchdown drive. And it's like, that is what the Rams do. Yeah, the they're third just gonna, quarter just disappeared, right? They're just going to jam it down your throat and kill the time. And so, um, you know, I really like that about them, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a little concerning that they're not as explosive and can't get those deep shots anymore. Yeah. I think that covers it. Let's get into our games. We've got a bunch of picks. I want to start high view. Let's start with what we think our games of the week are. So okay. let's, we got one game of the week, but for me, it was tough to pick because I thought there was really two games of the week. We got chiefs, dolphins and Vikings, Buccaneers. Now, are we not counting primetime games? You can count them. You like Ravens, Browns, Steelers, Bills. You like Steelers, Bills. Yeah, for sure. That's the best game of the week. I think that's great. I mean, I think Ravens, Browns is a great game too, but I like the ones you said. Chiefs, Dolphins will be interesting. It'll be, it, you know, that's a great litmus test for the Dolphins to see are they actually good, right? And they're, I'm not saying they have to even come in here and beat the Chiefs, but if they can be competitive at home against the Chiefs, I think that, that this Dolphins team is really set up for success. They have like four first-round picks this year in this draft. You know, I think they're pretty legit. I think if you put Chiefs, Dolphins, and Steelers, Bills together, together the, that's the game of the week because if the Steelers lose and the Chiefs win, they're the one seed. Whereas if the Steelers go into Buffalo and win, that you feel a lot better about them holding on to that one seed. Uh, Vince Williams, their other, their top linebacker was making all the play calls. He's going to be out. He's on the COVID-19 list now. So you've got like all of the linebacking core out the starting linebacking core at this point with Vince Williams gone. And then Spillane, the backup uh, is out with a knee injury. So like all the linebackers are gone except Mm -hmm. for TJ Watt. You've got TJ Watt and all the backups, but I mean, if they can go into Buffalo and win, then you can make a case that they could hold on the one seed. Whereas if the Dolphins, like you said, show up, that gives the Steelers some breathing room. But to me, the Vikings bucks, because I don't know, I just can't get over. Is Tom Brady there? Is he not? The Vikings are now in the seventh spot. I, I think to me, that is the game of the week. I like Vikings bucks as the game of the week. Yeah, I think outside I mean, of the primetime slots. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, I think the big thing about that is this one has that has the most implications, right? I think the other games we're talking about the bills and the Steelers and the chiefs are firmly in the playoffs. There's no question about that. The dolphins most likely are in the playoffs, but it's just a matter of kind of seeding with all those teams. This game between the Vikings and the bucks truly can come down to who makes it because I think, yeah, if the Vikings win, they jump into that seven spot and the bucks can fall out of the playoffs. So, or, or they'll at least have the tiebreaker in that situation. So I I think that's a huge, huge game. I think that is the most, maybe not the best game, but definitely the most important game in the game that I think I'm going to have the eyes on. Um, I think that'll be a great game. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get into it. Texans at bears. This one was even when I looked at it, is it showing even for you? Houston minus one and a half. Houston minus one and a half. Okay. Well, I got it when it was even Connor, because I did my picks a couple of days ago. So, okay. So who do you like? (laughs) I like the Texans. I think Deshaun yeah. can play in some cold weather. It's supposed to be 35, partly cloudy, not seen anything crazy on wind, any of that. I'm going to go quarterback play on something like this. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree. I think the bears have just given up as a team. I think, I, I don't know how high you would have to put the line. Now the Texans, I think you would keep forgetting the Texans are like the Falcons in that every game, I think the Texans are good and they're just not a good team. Like I always think they're so good. I'm like, oh my gosh, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Cooks. Like you have all these guys, you have talent on that offense. And even the defense, you look at it and you're like, okay, you have JJ Watt. Like there's some players too on their defense, but they're just, there's bad. I mean, there's bad, but the bears are horrible. They've given up. The Texans actually want to win, I think. So I think I would, I'm going to go with the Texans, but I, I mean, this game is maybe the biggest throwaway game of the weekend. You think the Texans want to get Romeo Cornell another head coaching job? No, not at all. They but just they want to win. <laughs> yeah. Well, cause you also got to remember they don't own their first round pick. So they're not at all incentivized to do poorly. 
And so I think that, that, and especially players are trying to win. And so ownership and management's not trying to lose because Cronell's trying to go get, you know, whether he stays on as the defensive coordinator, if he gets a job somewhere else, he's trying to stay in the league. So I, you know, their team trying to win the bears have just given up. I'll take Texans. Cowboys at Bengals. We got Cowboys by three and a half now. That's getting up there. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be the Bengals, 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 Bengals. I mean, Last week, they barely missed covering. Who were they playing last week? Were they playing the Dolphins? That sounds right. Yeah, yeah. they were playing the Dolphins. I think they just missed covering. I took them last week in my Raspberry White Claw week, uh, going with all the underdogs. And I'm surprised you haven't taken your victory lap yet because your underdogs went off last week. They did. Where did I go? I went nine and four, right? Yeah, against the spread. That's incredible. <laughs> Let's go. The underdogs it, went it, off. But you're saying the underdogs are going to go off this week. I think so too, which means that they're not going to go off, but I think they are. (laughs) I like them. All right. Well, maybe my good luck will break even with your bad luck and we can just, you know, go pull 500 or something. Yeah, that works. Uh, Yeah. I think Bengals. I mean, it's so Andy Dalton returning to Cincinnati. Yeah. I'll take him. I'll take the Cowboys to cover. I forgot about that. Yeah. I'll take him. Okay. So you're on the, you're on the favorite then. Yeah, in this situation. But I like moving. I mean, again, I don't have much to say about this game. I don't know if you do, but <laughs> we can be done. Yeah. Oh, one thing I'll say is, did you see that Chad Johnson used to call the Bengals coaches at two in the morning? Awesome. Say, I'm open. What do you say? He's just like, I'm open. Hey, coach, I'm open. And then hang up. That is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. And the best part, too, is he was calling Hugh Jackson, which makes yeah. it even funnier that it was Hugh Jackson. <laughs> so good. I know. I wish AB, that sounds like the most AB thing because we were still pretty young when Chad was finishing up, but I love it. Oh, totally. That's, or like a, like an Odell move or something like that. One of these, one of those. Well, Odell settled down too and things got weird in Cleveland and he's hurt. Who's going to be the next diva? Oh man. Cause like DK, you know, he's got the rings. He's got the hair. He's quiet though. He's quiet though. much. Even yeah, Jalen think, Ramsey with the Rams is settled down on the other side of the ball. That's not true at all. Jalen goes off on everybody 100%. No, he of the goes time. off on the field, but he's not doing oh, yeah. everything he was doing in Jacksonville. I mean, he wanted out, but. Right. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. He's going to be the now. personality. Yeah. Let me think on it. I'll get you an answer. Uh, by the end of the show, I'll come up with someone. I'll think of every team okay. as we go through it. Speaking of quiet, one. Kyrie got fined 25K for not talking. Kyrie is such an idiot. <laughs> and you were, we were talking about this before the show. Um, and, and I think this came up, you might've saw that this week when he said that he's excited Durant's the first like clutch player he's played with to just no respect to LeBron. LeBron said he's heard about it. And then I was, I was listening and, and the host was talking about how Kyrie, I didn't know this. He thinks the earth's flat, Oh yeah, uh, all this stuff that just crazy. And then he also doesn't believe LeBron's clutch and shows no respect to LeBron. So. Kyrie's just an it. Uh, Kyrie's crazy. I don't know. I don't know what his deal is, but he's just like, he's so all over the map. And I don't know if it's like immaturity. He has this like, it seems so fake, but he has this whole like mindset of like, oh, I'm smarter than everybody else. Cause you saw his response to like, I don't talk to pawns or something like that. It's like, dude, shut up. Just go play basketball. Yeah. Like, yeah. Have respect for media. They're doing their job. You do your job. Like, they're not trying to be rude. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think Kyrie is just, he, he's really good. He's the best. He's the best ball handler. He's maybe the most skilled player I've ever seen in my life. He's the best ball handler and best below there and finisher of all time. And I don't even think that those two are debatable, but I don't know. I just think he's, he's an idiot. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's like the NBA now has too many divas like James Harden right now, not showing up to practice. And then the NFL, like we were talking about the receivers, like where, where are they? Like, it's both are becoming too much of what they are. Like the NFL is so disciplined. You can be cut tomorrow. You can just lose your salary. You're gone. And then the NBA, there's, it's so much of a player's league. It's almost empowering it too much. I think both need to take a little bit from each other. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, have you seen the Netflix series, the coaches rules, coaches like rules or something? No, I've never heard of that. Okay. Well, I need your help right now. So there was a manager on that show. He would, he just wouldn't talk to the media. He's like the Chelsea manager. He, he, all, he's like the most famous manager in European soccer. Is it Pep? And he's Man City's coach. He's, I don't think he's Man City's anymore. His name's like Mourinho or something. Oh, Jose Mourinho. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's nuts. Is he at man? Is he at man U right now? Yeah, I don't know where he is right now, but he's hilarious. I one time he got banned from the stadium and he hit out in like a laundry basket when the UEFA officials tried to find him in the locker room because they suspected he'd try to sneak in. 
Yeah, he's he's insane. Yeah, he's at Tottenham right now, but he's he's the craziest manager ever. He's insane. Yeah, Mourinho's and apparently, and I, you know, obviously I, I'm gonna get corrected, but I think like nobody likes playing for him, but he's just like a good coach. He's like Jim Harbaugh. It's like he's not. <laughs> he's just a crazy man, and he's a good coach, but he, and he's like super never, cocky. Yeah. Oh, totally. He's totally. He's like, like I'm Harbaugh. the best ever, and yeah. Yeah, I mean he's really good, but he's yeah he's he good. like won he won uh, Champions League and then he just leaves the, the team to go to another team, which is mm-hmm. something that's weird about soccer. And I love how they call it sacked instead of fired. You've uh-huh. been sacked. Yep. <laughs> but he would yep. always leave after he's won the cup uh, to go to the next club. So it's pretty fascinating. But I just thought it was interesting because he he hates the media, kind of like Kyrie. So. Yeah, and I don't I don't get even just talking about that one when, when in soccer. This is, by the way, the most all over the place podcast that we've ever had, which I love. But That's in healthy. soccer, no yeah. one wants to listen to the basics. No, um, in soccer though, when when he does that, it's like, dude, he was at Chelsea. It's not like he was at some like third division club. He was at one of the best clubs in the world. Like, why do you need to go somewhere else? What's the what do you have to accomplish at a different place? But right. I think it's like Jim Harbaugh that people just get sick of him after a little bit. All of his craziness, him being weird at the media, all that stuff just wears on people, and he needs to go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wears he wears himself out. That's a good point. All right, for the go- show, no oh, way. I'm yeah. not letting you go back to this. <laughs> you got to explain your hottest take that we didn't get to hear earlier, which is that uh, we never landed on the moon. You're with Kyrie oh, oh, on yeah. this. 100. percent We never landed on the moon. We've never been to space. We've never landed on the moon. Never I- been to space. Well, what do you consider space? Is that are you guess, counting like, the International Space Station just right outside Earth? That's not real. What's your take on that? Yeah, it's not. We, we, no, that doesn't exist. That's like some studio or something. We've never been. No, International Space Station isn't real. Okay, I, so then the moon. Never been there. The moon's there. It exists. I'm not saying the moon's fake, but no, we've never been to the moon. Never been to the moon. Never been to space. All the pictures of Earth from space are false. I don't. I'm not positive the Earth isn't flat. I just there's a lot. There's a lot of things I'm not really sure about. Okay, so you're you're positive that the space station isn't real, and we haven't been yeah. to the moon. You're right. if you're iffy on if uh on if the earth is flat. Yeah, I got some questions. I don't I don't know. You need I to gotta, take a boat trip with some guys? You and what? Kyrie? Yeah. Let's I don't do some know reality just, TV. I'm in. Let's wear that it. beanie. It's gonna be cold down there in the Arctic. <laughs> Let's go. When we do our soul west, we might have to actually be going like south or something because it's not the because the earth is flat. Yeah. Sheesh. You'll probably have something to explain that away too, but but I love it. I love it. Yeah, well, we got to talk about the important things. If we're talking north south, that's just based on magnets. How do you prove that I'm going north? What if instead of at the North Pole, it's just the center of the earth? So when I'm pointing everywhere, it's just pointing towards the middle. Yeah. But the thing is, Connor, you got to understand on the other side of the spectrum, societies like all the fringes of the internet are convinced that like this is the year 2020. We've got like three weeks left to find out that there are aliens and the government's in contact with them. Yeah. I mean, I think that there are aliens for sure. So, are you in with the with the crazy Israeli scientist that said the space guy who said that there's an <laughs> underground base on Mars? We got we got people. I mean, if you don't think we've been to the moon, probably not. But what about the aliens? Would they Listen, contact I, the government, or would they just would they just avoid us and just interact <laughs> with random humans? Well, I really want to be in on aliens and this Israeli space guy. So let's just say I'm I'm hyped on any conspiracy theory. I want to get in on it. I'm excited about it. I, I like what this guy's saying. I think it makes a lot of sense. The problem is he keeps referencing that you need to read his book. And if you go try to find his book, he doesn't have a book. So he has kind of lost it. So I don't oh. know of like, I want to believe him so bad, but don't keep telling me to read your book when you haven't written a book. <laughs> the one that everyone was saying was uh, the least believable thing. He said the underground uh, base on Mars. He said in contact with aliens, the US and Israel are working with them. And everyone on Twitter was joking that the most believable part was that Trump was going to release it all. Yeah. But the intelligence of the US and Israel talked him out of it. And everyone's like, no chance Trump could tweet, keep his mouth shut. He'd tweet it out. That's a good point. That's a good point. But, but, so that in the book kind of make us doubt this guy. But, but, but Trump created Space Force. It's because he probably heard it and he's like, oh, shoot, we got to get something <laughs> going here. And so that's his like subtle nod to the American people of like, hey, guys. I'm telling you this for a reason. It sounds like a movie. It's like Space Jams. It's like what? Space Force. But it's, it's time. I mean, it, it is a TV show. It's on Netflix. We got three weeks. Let's do it. All right. I'm in. 2020 aliens. 
All right, back to something a little less exciting. Chiefs at Dolphins. We said this is one of the games of the week. I like the Chiefs here. I I'm going to go with the Dolphins. Disappointment, disappointment last week against Denver. They'll bounce back. I think the Chiefs at this point are just going to do enough to win, especially because they the, they're got they going to the Saints next week. So I don't think they're trying to blow out the, the Dolphins right now. I think the Chiefs are going to just – I mean, they're going to win. I think absolutely they're going to win. But I think the Dolphins keep it close. And even if that close – seven and a half, I think that half point might be important because I think I could see the Dolphins scoring a garbage time touchdown to get it within one score. But um, – yeah, I mean, I think I think there's Chiefs enough win, there no though that Tua, if Tua's on not as good game, it's a blowout. Whether 100%. the Chiefs whether the Chiefs are motivated or not, it be it just becomes a blowout if if Tua has one of his bad games, like he did against Denver. And I mean, the Chiefs mm-hmm. just had a little bit of a letdown against Denver, but there's totally a chance that Tua could not be on his game and it's a blowout. And I think the Chiefs are motivated, right? Uh, they just have the tiebreaker between them and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's kind of falling apart and they can get the one seed and there's only one buy. They want that buy. Yeah, no, I agree. And that's why I think the chiefs are going to win. I think the chiefs have realized that they're so good that they can just in a quarter decide they want to win and win the game in a quarter. So I think they're just trying to hang out and they're going to win and do well or whatever. And then if all of a sudden they're only up by like three at halftime, they're going to come out and score 28 points in the third quarter. And like, that's, that's what the chiefs have. And so I could see them just being up 10 the whole game. And then the Dolphins score a garbage time touchdown or something to cover. I think sure. I think they're going to win. And I don't think – it's one of those you watch them, the Chiefs play, and even if they're losing, even in that Broncos game when it was like close and a little back and forth and all that stuff, you're never sitting there being like, ooh, this might happen to the Chiefs. Whereas like I did feel watching that Steelers game, even early on, it was like, oh, shoot, Washington might do this. As opposed yeah. to, you know, you watch the Chiefs and you're like, yeah, whatever, they'll figure it out, like no problem. Yeah, I hate that as a Steelers fan. Everyone's oh, been yeah. saying that. I hate it. Everyone's like Baltimore's so good and Baltimore keeps losing. I mean, like they have a great roster and mm-hmm. they strength the schedule this and it just everyone's just shitting on the Steelers. It's the worst. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Baltimore's good either. I think the Browns are the best team in the division. But we'll get there. Monday <laughs> night. Monday night game. We'll save that. But yeah. Listen, Chiefs Dolphins, I I put three question marks on my list. I thought this was one of the three hardest games to pick this week. I'm going to go Chiefs, but I I think the Dolphins makes a lot of sense. The Cardinals and Giants. This is fun. Giants. Giants are fun. I like the defense. Giants. Giants. Oh, yeah. They're defense fun to really watch. Good. I liked it. I liked the game last week against Seattle. That was fun. Totally. Yeah. No, I agree. And, it, it, you know, it, they're they're coming together. The only thing, the question mark here is uh, Daniel Jones is questionable to play. I think they got away with it with Colt McCoy last week. I don't think that that magic still will live against the Cardinals. But I think if if Daniel Jones plays, I think they win outright. I think if Colt McCoy plays, I think it'll be a close game. Yeah, 55 and rainy, though. I think they could sneak it with Colt McCoy, too. I don't Have we seen Kyler in any interesting conditions this year? I didn't watch him last year. I was so off no, the Cardinals last year with all the turnovers. but Yeah, I don't think we have. Yeah, it'll be interesting. And I think, yeah, to see see how that goes um, there. Vikings I'm, Bucks. This is the one I'm excited about. Vikings. Those Vikings, six yeah. and a half. This is emotional, but it's also, I think, reasonable. Uh, but you know, is it have the Vikings won five in a row or did they lose one in there? No, they've won. I'm pulling it up right now. They lost one, they lost to the Cowboys. And that's the thing, though. They barely <laughs> beat the Jaguars, they barely beat the Panthers, they lose to the Cowboys, barely beat the Bears, and then beat the Lions. But then they also like beat the Packers. So, like, I, I have zero idea what's going on with these Vikings, but I think that they're I, I like them to win outright. I think the Bucs are imploding. However, the only thing to think about is that the Bucs are coming off a bye and they might have figured out some of the issues they've been having. So I I think this is going to be a really good game, but I think the Vikings win and win outright. Or they cover That's and they the win tricky outright. thing is when the Bucs came off their mini bye, they just blew through Carolina, which is right. another middling team that kind of reminds you of the Vikings. Mm-hmm. And that was on the road at Carolina, and they just kind of blew through them. Uh, Ronald Jones had the big touchdown. Tough. I think the thing that'll be interesting is the Vikings have a really good run offense and Dalvin Cook, and the Bucs right. have the best run defense I can remember in recent memory. And so it'll be really interesting to see that kind of strength on strength. But then, and then can they get Justin Jefferson the ball enough times? I mean, he's electric. And so if they can get the ball into his hands, um, you know, I think they have a good chance. But it'll just be interesting to see kind of the play calling and how Kirk Cousins plays in this. Yeah, game. it's not prime time, so 
Give me some Kirk. Here we go. Yep. Yep. I agree. Broncos is the Panthers. I'm showing Panthers minus three. Is that what you're yep. seeing? Yep. Give me the Panthers. I, I like the Broncos. <laughs> They're so they're so inconsistent. What can you like about the Broncos? I mean, they I showed know. up last week against Kansas City. Raspberry White Claw. I think they have a good defense. I think that uh, Vic Fangio can figure out ways to beat teams with his defense. And I think that the Panthers, Teddy Bridgewater's good. McCaffrey's not playing. And I just, I don't think the Panthers are that good either. So I don't. Yeah, but Curtis Samuel's back. Didn't you hear Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, yeah. DJ Moore's out, but Curtis Samuel's in. So you're going to have two of the three receive. I'm just kidding. I'm really I mean, that's going to be a Christian horrible McCaffrey game. matters way more. Yeah. I mean, that's going to be a horrible game. I, I'll take the Broncos to cover, but I, I, they'll probably win too, but I have no idea. That game's crazy. Yeah. And so you're not stealing the Raspberry White call line, but you're saying dogs are barking this week. Dogs yeah, are barking. The dogs are barking. I like the underdogs a lot. Titans at Jags. This is another one I questioned. This is one of the trickiest ones of the week at seven and a half. Just got blown out by the Browns. I'm t- taking Tennessee, but I don't like it. I'm taking the Jags. <laughs> I'm taking the Jags. I think dogs that, are barking. Hey, the dogs are barking. I think again, I we've we say one and eleven, week. Connor. What are they against the spread? Do you have that? I don't know. Probably not good. With? I don't know. Probably not good, but. Here's the deal. We've said it all season. The Titans can't get pressure on a quarterback, and that still remains true. It keeps showing up every single week. I think Mike Glennon is not a mobile quarterback, as we all know. He's just going to stand there and throw the ball, and he's still not great even when he does just stand there and throw it. But I think against a team where he doesn't have to move, he's not going to have to be you know, running outside of the pocket. I think he can do stuff, especially with – I think DJ Chark is actually really good. I think Keelan Cole's solid. So And LaVisca Chenault is pretty good. So – I kind of like the Jags and I think the Titans are starting to like falter and not be that good anymore. So I'm going to go with the Jags to cover. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they had a huge week. They beat Jackson or they beat uh, Baltimore and then they get blown out by Cleveland. Oh, they blew out the Colts too. So they had two good weeks and then they get blown out. So we'll see here. I'm starting to realize Connor, all my picks are teams that I want to win. I'm so biased. (laughs) I do that too. It's okay. Colts at Raiders. I I pick the Raiders. Do I necessarily actually think the Raiders are going to win? No, but I want the Raiders to win. I want the Raiders in the playoffs. I told you it's going to, I want the Raiders to be in the wild card spot. And you said you're cool with that because yeah. you're cool with them losing. And that's more pain for Raiders fans. And you hate the Raiders. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I I'll stand by that statement. I think the Raiders are fun, right? I mean, I think they shouldn't have won that game. Aaron last week Waller again. last week. He's an animal. <laughs> He's an animal, but, but again, they should have lost to the jets. So you can, whatever you want to say about the Raiders, they literally, if any other season over, if I was the defensive coordinator for the jets, they win that game. So I just, I think that, you know, it, I don't think Williams, man, Greg Williams. That's what he does. The Saint scandal. Then you got the max splits and the jets. That's what he does. He's done it before though. He's done it before. He's just, that's, that's all he does. So he's just, He's just crazy. He brings the heat, but I don't know. I you need so, a Greg Williams in your life. No, I'm you need fine. someone to just tell you to blitz and be more aggressive on everything, or do you need I someone to tell you to simmer down and drop into that cover simmer. three? Simmer, simmer. <laughs> drop I, into I, coverage. That tail. I got you for the Stoke. I don't need that from <laughs> anybody else. All right, uh, I'll take the Raiders because the dogs are barking. But I, you also always got to be a little bit concerned about a team that's a home underdog especially a team in the Raiders that aren't bad and the Colts aren't necessarily good. I kind of like the Raiders in this, in this spot. Yeah. It could be a lot of Neheim Hines from Phillip rivers, a lot of passes out of the backfield to backs. We'll see how exciting this one is. Although T Y showed up last week for the Colts. Yeah. Yeah. That's kinda true. Exciting. Yeah. Listen, jets at Seahawks. <laughs> All right. getting all these teams from the East Coast, like you said, the NFC East, AFC East, NFC, all the, the West and the East are playing each other this year, which I'm surprised they didn't change that. Like in the league meetings, I guess flying on an airplane with your team doesn't really matter how long it is. But with COVID, it just feels a bit weird. Yeah. And they also, I mean, they set schedules out years in advance. So yeah. that's something that you can't really adjust or mess with. Um, yeah, I, I'm taking the Jets in this week to cover. <laughs> I think that the Seahawks are so bad right now. I don't understand what's going on. They've looked 13 horrible. and a half. We got to say that too, to the audience. Yeah. 13 That's and a half. I just think the jets will cover. I absolutely do not think they're going to win. 
no, no chance do I think they win, but I think that they can lose by 10 by 11. I think that that's possible. So I, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm going to take the jets, but this also seems like, and I think this is what I think the jets are going to cover, but it, I could also see this being a get right game for the Seahawks where they win by 35, where they just go out and win 45 or 42 to seven. I don't think that's going to happen, but I could see if, they were going to have that game to get them back on track. This is the game to do that. Yeah. So I'm coming back to it because I mentioned DK Metcalf. He's got the diva look on the outside, but he's quiet on the inside. Have you come up with a, the next diva receiver yet? No, I don't know. I love Cheetah. I, he does the backflips in the yeah, end zone, but I, again, he's quiet off the field. Cheetah'd be cool, but he'd have to, it'd have to be the CTE play with what happened to Antonio Brown, right? Like something I have to <laughs> yeah. knock Cheetah into craziness. Cause right now he's kind of like AB earlier in his career. Like, he doesn't say anything off the field or do any, no Facebook lives, nothing. Yeah. DeAndre Hopkins. The problem is, yeah, a lot of these guys. Yeah. Are, DeAndre could lose it. Cause he's getting like two targets a game. Yeah. And he it the could thing get with, dark in, in the desert. Totally. And so that's the thing though, is like guys who does it off the field. Not many I'm looking through and I don't really see anybody who's crazy off the field. Some of these guys like DeAndre Hopkins is crazy on the field. He talks as much trash as anybody in the league. I saw a video of him. A coach comes up to him and is like, Hey, a coach on the other team comes up to him in pregame and goes, Hey man, you're, you're probably the best receiver in the league right now. Like trying to be nice to him. And Hopkins just looks at him and goes, I know like, yeah, I know. And you're like, yeah. what? Like you're insane. So pulling a Mourinho. <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't know any guys that talk off the field, but yeah, I think, I think the jets will cover that game. I think, I don't know how I have no idea how it's going to happen, but again, the Seahawks defense is so bad. So maybe if the jets, Sam Darnold looks good. I have no idea. I don't know what's going to happen. Sam Darnold there. looking good, man. He hasn't looked good since that 70 yard run with the fake slide. Yeah, that exactly. was sick. That, that was, was sick. Yeah. That's some Thursday night football for you. Packers at Lions, uh, maybe a candidate, Devontae Adams, but he has Aaron Rodgers, so he doesn't have to he doesn't have to go diva. I like yeah. the Packers here. I do too. Lions are horrible. I'm gonna stay by that. They're really bad. Minus nine. Give me the pack. Yeah, I'll take them. And they already had, I mean, they, they lost Patricia. And they already had their one game playing hard for their interim coach. I, I think that this is the game where they, you know, they, again, they also beat the bears last week. So the lions are coming off a big win for them. And I could see the Packers coming in and winning by a hundred. So I think, I think Packers. What's crazy definitely. is two days ago, this was, you could get this at seven and a half and now it's at nine. We got to get our picks in earlier, Connor. I know, I know, but I, I always am hesitant because you don't know who's going to be in or out. You don't know what's going to happen. And also, I mean, if I liked the Lions in this situation, it's nice to wait. So it kind of just depends. You don't know where the public money is going to go. And so it's sometimes nice to, you know, see where that's going. Yeah, 100%. That's in a dome, which brings up to me, uh, how many more teams do you think that uh, Roger Gale is going to let build domes or indoor stadiums? Because because football historically has always been a sport where you got to respect the weather. You got to have some weather. Like you don't want Kansas City in 10, 15 years building a dome, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually like the domes, but I do think it's fun every once in a while to get good snow football. So I think as long as, you know, the really good stadiums don't uh, do that, Lambo will never go away. Uh, you know, the Chiefs and Broncos need to keep there. Yeah, we need to keep those outdoors. But, you know, if we're talking about like, the Jets, if they ever, obviously they've got a new stadium, but if the Jets got a dome, like, I don't care. Like, whatever, you know? That helps that those two NFC East teams and the Eagles. I mean, we get Saints at Eagles this week. It's going to be good weather, though. They're getting a little bit of a warm spurt. It's supposed to be like 60-ish, partly cloudy, maybe some rain. But I wanted to see Taysom Hill in the weather, and I wanted to see Jalen Hurts in the weather. But if it's good weather, I also like that because I want to see both these guys out there, see if they can throw the football. There's talk Taysom Hill could take over the job. Is Drew Brees getting this back? Oh. Yeah, Drew Brees is getting it. As long as Drew Brees is there, he's a starting quarterback. I mean, he's he's like your franchise savior. He's not just like... He's not Alex Smith with Callan Kaepernick. Totally. And, and he's not like either like uh, Philip Rivers with the Colts, right? Philip Rivers came in as this veteran. And then if he was really horrible, you could go with Jacoby Brissett or something else. You're not going to do that with, you know, Drew Brees, who is the literally the franchise savior. You're not going to do that to him. Right. So. If they and and the thing is, if they really wanted to go the Taysom Hill route, they would have told Drew Brees retire. Like, don't come back this season. He said he almost he said he was planning to retire, and then somehow was talked out of it or something. But I don't think you know. I I think he's retiring at the end of the season, but I don't think that they're ever going to replace him unless unless though the only other thing is that he's hurt because he's hurt because they don't want 
him to be the quarterback and they don't want him to say that he's hurt. You know what I mean? But you don't do that to a guy who's won the Super Bowl for your franchise who you waited to see if you could talk him back, waited on him to make the decision rather than Phillip Rivers with, with uh, Los Angeles saying, hey, you know, goodbye. You're right. Making pretty clear to him, whereas what they waited and were patient with Drew Brees. So I don't see that, oh, he's hurt, quote unquote, thing going right. on there. So listen, it's minus seven. New Orleans. Uh, this was one of the toughest ones for me. I'm taking the Saints. Mm-hmm. Eagles yeah. are falling apart. They're scrappy at times, but they're just pieces at this point. Yeah, I mean, the, the Eagles are just not a good team. And I think the Saints the Saints have the hottest defense in football. And that's saying a lot because I think the Rams have the hottest defense in football. But the Saints are on one right now. And they are they're the scariest team. You know, them and the Chiefs are the two scariest teams in the NFL right now. And so... I think the Saints win. I think they roll. I think they're feeling themselves. And so I we think, found yeah, our they're... diva. We finally got to a team. Oh, no Mike Thomas. Like Michael Thomas. But he's so, yeah. so he's the lamest diva possible. Uh, that's true. But can't because guard Mike. he has real problems. Like, I guess he punched someone in practice, got suspended <laughs> a game. But no one follows him on social media. He doesn't have like a big personality like AB or Ocho Cinco or T.O. Right. So no one's following him because he's super interesting. It's just like, oh, he did this crazy stuff. Well, and the other thing that's hard with him is he's not a flashy receiver. He's not going out there catching, you know, he just catches 17 balls a day across the middle. He could be super flashy. It's kind of, he's been with Drew Brees late in his career. That's you give fair. Him like Josh Allen, I think he could be super flashy. That's fair, but I think he's just a great route runner, understands space, understands how to get open. Whereas like you look at AB and he's doing these crazy routes. He's also running, you know, Tyreek Hill's getting 80 yard touchdown passes every game. Like, those are guys that are fun to watch and do crazy stuff. Right. Like Thomas it, it is just somehow itself. always open. Yeah. He's just always open 15 yards downfield. <laughs> yeah. And those exciting guys, to your point, that was T.O. That was Ocho Cinco. Like it lends itself to you being the diva and it lends into your marketability and people caring about you. Everyone's like, oh, Michael Thomas got suspended, even though he's better by the team. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Unless you have one in your fantasy. Uh, Falcons at Chargers. Falcons minus three. Give me the away teams. For me, it's the away teams are barking this week, not the dogs. Uh, give okay. Me the Falcons. I don't know what to do with the Chargers anymore. I, I I think I might like the Falcons in this situation too. I think the Chargers are a good team. I don't know how they keep like not winning games and then how they just got rolled by the Patriots last week. So I think kind of the Chargers, sometimes you get to the point in the season where a good, a, a decent team loses a ton of games they should have won and the team just kind of gives up and i think that's where the chargers are at right now yeah it's collapsing it's yeah. over yeah so I'll, I'll i'll go with the falcons with you it's only three points i like the falcons that's how i feel about the bears and that's how you feel about the bears yeah unless you don't want to call them decent well no i mean the bears <laughs> started out five and one so they have to be some level of okay and the bears have a really good defense so they if they had a decent offense they'd be really good but right yeah no i agree with that Washington at the Niners, two, five, and seven. Some of these are painful. We're running through them. Then we can get to the Ravens, Browns, but give me the Niners. I'm taking 10 away teams, but I'm taking the Niners on the road in Arizona yeah. in the desert at home. I want to count that as an away too. We can just call it a neutral, but is it bad that I'm taking I'm taking 10 real away teams this week? Is that too much? No, I don't other. think that's bad. I think you're also, I mean, listen, coming off Raspberry White Claw week, you can do whatever you want right now. I'm confident. I'm go yeah, I feel good about that. Uh, Washington's good, man. I don't know. I think Washington's really good. So I don't know. I think Washington's pretty solid. Really good, man. Really good, man. Their defense is. Their you watch the Steelers really game. I know you're so happy because you can say this is the most overrated te- team. Their defense of all is time, legit. and you got that. You got Washington winning. Oh, the Steelers dropped so many passes. Yeah, that's fine, but there wasn't really any pass rush. I mean, also the Steelers. It's a little weird how obsessed they are with not letting Ben get sacked. It's kind of scary. Like, yeah. oh, let's pass it one second after he gets out. All these one-yard routes. But I didn't think Washington's defense was outstanding. You did? I think I, – I mean, I just think they're really good. I think that – I They're solid. It, you also just don't know what you're going to get. The Niners, the Niners are really solid too. Yeah, you just don't know which Niners you're going to get. Right, because the Niners have had weeks where they look really good. Give me the Rams, Niners. Give me when they play the Niners. Oh, game over. Niners by a million. (laughs) Yeah, it's over. But that's what I'm saying, though. When the Rams play the Niners, the Niners look incredible. But then some other – I mean, against the Dolphins, they looked horrible. So it's kind of just like what what Niners team shows up, and depending on that team is where it goes. But I think in this situation, I'm going to go with Washington. I'm also riding the hot hand. But, yeah, I think – 
Washington. I'll go with Washington. My biggest thing also- with Washington is oh, that ahead. I kind of like the Washington football team thing. I kind of like the colors. Mm-hmm. I kind of like the W. I kind of maybe just leave it. Yeah, I like it. I, I'd be okay with that. I think I think the last point I'd make on them is that this is the ultimate letdown game that they're feeling themselves after beating the Steelers, and then now they just come out and lay a stinker against the Niners. Whereas I the Giants got to show up. They're playing the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep, I agree. Both those teams have talent, though. It's just the Niners' record is what the stinker is. I don't think the Niners are that much worse than Well, they the just Cardinals. have a ton of injuries, too. Their whole off defensive line is hurt. I think Nick Mullins being their quarterback, he's not great. Uh, so I, I'll give the Niners a pass, but man, I think that, you know, they, these are not, these are not going to be easy games against teams that should be easy uh, no. to beat. So we've got the AFC North now, three of the AFC North teams, Steelers at Bills. I am showing the Bills by two and a half. Is that what we got? I see three. Three. Give me the Steelers. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. You should take the Bills. You should take the points. You should take that the defense is so hurt. They've got TJ Watt and no other starting linebackers. Doesn't make sense, but yeah, give me the Steelers. Um, I can't say anything else. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, listen, the Steelers you would take the Bills, right? Yeah, three I mean, is not the a lot. No, the Steelers I, have looked awful, and they're traveling, and the Bills yeah. are legit. Yeah, I mean, I definitely going to take the Bills. I think. I think they're pretty good. I think that Josh Allen's playing incredible. Again, I think this is one of those games, kind of like we just talked about with, with the Niners. It's what Josh Allen shows up because he's played really well this season, but he's also had a few games where he's looked horrible. So if so he I don't can know be if you solid, can see this. Yeah. Can you see who the leading rusher is right now in this game? Going yeah, this James game? Connor, who's been <laughs> out for like half the season. And these both these teams are legit teams that cannot rush the ball. I mean, both of the the Buffalo backs haven't looked good. James Conner hasn't looked great. Benny Without Snell Bud- is just. Oh yeah, I I mean I like Benny Snell in college, but is but is the Steelers defense going to be able to generate pressure without Bud Dupree? I think so because they got Alu Alu back. Um, they have this guy Bugs who's showed up. He was the one who made the big tackle on um, on Baltimore when they were going for oh, yeah. down in the second game when uh, they tried to QB sneak it with Lamar. Um, who else did they get back? Uh, the guy at a Notre Dame, really, really good. So the D line is a lot better than okay. you think. Everyone's just heard of Cameron Hayward, but all the other guys are super solid. So I think yeah, they'll be fine. Okay, because I think that'll come down. TJ Watt, who's a right. defensive player of the year contender, and then the D line's really good. So everyone yeah. talks about the linebackers. The the defense is still pretty rock solid. Although I don't know how you someone who actually played football would know how to exploit those linebackers, but I I'd see it more in the passing game. Um, yeah. coverage than actually in the rush pressure yeah i agree i think yeah if it, it's gonna be a good game i think that these are teams that their strengths match up well and their weaknesses match up well i think it'll be fun to watch i'm excited that's a good you know a good sunday night game that um you know i'll be excited to stay tuned for i i'm gonna go with the bills plus three or minus three at home playing well Plus, I think, yeah, you know get a chance to kind of spoil the steelers season a little bit by getting them you know to not get the buy I'm going to go with the Bills. Yeah, and the player I was talking about on the D-line was Stefan Tuitt. Mm, mm-hmm, Notre mm-hmm. Dame, yeah. He's borderline borderline Pro Bowl every year. Cool. So Ravens, Browns, give me the Browns. Browns are going to win this outright. Browns are going to make a play on the Steelers here. We're going to have week 17. If the Steelers lose, they could win the division still. Ravens that get knocked out of the wild, wild card spot. I love that. I love that as a Steelers fan. You get the Ravens knocked out of the wild card spot. Perfect. Seven and six, they're not going to make it unless they win out. Browns at 10 and three, Steelers at 11 and two. One game back of the Steelers, you got week 17. And the Browns, the best running game. I mean, those are the two best run teams in the NFL, but one of the best running teams in the NFL, the Browns, could just run all over a linebacker list Steelers team. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, first of all, I thought the Browns were going to win. I think the Browns, this is going to be the big statement win because they haven't been able to beat the Steelers or the Ravens, right? They've been, they've looked good. They've had wins, but they haven't been able to beat those guys. Right. And so I think that, yeah, big win against the Ravens would be huge. And then I, I'm selfishly hoping for, like you're saying, a matchup in week 17 to potentially win the division. I don't know how those tiebreakers work, but if the tiebreak, although I actually think the Steelers have the tiebreaker. Right. Only because 
the Steelers have a better in division record because the Browns, their three losses are against the Ravens and the Steelers, right? Yeah. Oh no, they have true. one. Who's their other loss to? I'll look, but yeah. So, but anyways, re- regardless of all of that, I think that it could be, oh, the Raiders. Yeah. I just think that uh, it's going to be a good game too. I think it's going to be a really low scoring game, but I also thought that in the Browns Titans last week, I said my best play of the week was the under in that game. And that game went over in like the third quarter. So <laughs> I, this is what I'm saying. I'm the worst gambler of all time, but um, I like the Browns to run all over the Ravens. Uh, I think the Ravens just, I, I think their spirit is broken right now and they can't beat good teams. So I'm going to go with the Browns. I think so too. Unless you see some like miraculous improvement from Lamar in the passing game. I'm I, I like the Browns as well. And I think the same yep. thing with the spirit broken. They don't feel like they can win a super bowl. They have so much talent and explosiveness, but if you have that huge hole, which to me is bigger than like the Steelers or bills, not being able to run the ball is if you don't feel confident in your quarterback throwing the ball, yep, not going to work. Yeah, and part of that, I will give credit. You know, Lamar Jackson, it's not all his fault. He has no good receivers on his team. But I just think, yeah, you got to be able to feel comfortable of your quarterback throwing the ball. And I think that's why you look at the Ravens, and this it's a team that never can come back from, you know, what have you ever seen them come back from down 10 points or down, you know, 14 points or whatever? It's They never can. They get up when they do well and when they look good. They get up early and then they run the ball down your throat the entire yep. game. And if they can do that, they're the best team in the league, right? Because they have the best run game. They have a really good defense and a really dangerous quarterback, not necessarily a great quarterback, but a really dangerous one. And so they need to be in a good situation for them to be really good. But this seems like a game where I don't see them, you know, being super dangerous the whole time. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's going to be a good week. Um, maybe the dogs will bark. Maybe they won't. We had the raspberry white claw. Now we've got the dogs barking. We'll see. Hope you enjoyed this one, everyone. And uh, go spit some fire and win your picks. Cool. See you guys.